Hiya, it's at Travel Culture with you again. Yay! Today, let's learn about this other important aspect during building and humanity as a whole. Well, having looked at the full process of roofing a residential building, by the way the process is similar to other house types that will have a iron sheet roofing or brick tile roofing type. The difference is very minimal, as there could be other roofing types like houses with a flat iron slab that would need mm. deeper exploration to see if timber is placed there too. Anyways, back to this important stage of roofing which is generally a very important aspect throughout all building stages. Food is one most important aspect during the roofing stage. There are several options. One, the builders may receive a full wage that includes their feeding, and it's up to them to decide it when to eat. What to eat? Two, usually the builders may be given a separate fee for lunch, where they will buy food in a restaurant to eat. Three, the site owner may decide to pay a local restaurant, so the builders can go over to eat. Four, they may decide to hire someone to cook for them at the site, which may be a payment to the cook or buying the food and the expenses will depend if they are incurred by the builders individually buying or together all contributing from their full wage or the site owner expense. Then five, which is quite very rare, is when the builders decide among themselves who will be cooking each day with the tasks distributed evenly as was this case at this site. However, even if the cooking task is distributed evenly, some are bad cooks and others still don't like cooking, but the good news is when there is someone who loves to cook. Here we meet one of the builders whose role is mainly to cook and boy he loves it. He allowed us to explore some of the steps he takes to cook. He starts off by making the African three stone stove. He organizes bricks in each corner to make triangle form stove. This is what is called the African traditional three stone stove usually that has been used since ancient times and still useful today. He piles firewood of small light pieces that light fast in the middle of the stones. The big wood pieces are placed at edge to be used when the fire is bright. He lights the fire using a folded small plastic bag that he has tied into a big note in the middle. He first lights it and let it drip slowly on the wood before the big note is firm with fire to then place it in between the small wood pieces to light them slowly. Generally, it's just like one would light the campfire. From this angle, one can see how he organizes the dripping plastic together to keep in one place as it lights up into the Bunsen burner intense flame that slowly lights the wood. He has to carefully organize the tinier wood pieces carefully around the lighting blue such it doesn't blank out and having to repeat the whole process again. As an environmental person it was at the same time hard to follow through this aspect because one the firewood used means it came from a gone tree. However much of the firewood comes from the timber remains used during house construction. Also, the area has lots of fallen trees that can be used for firewood. Thus, firewood usage was not a big problem. Before going into the big problem, let's first examine this step. This is where actually the whole process started. Here, we can see the firewood logs are small poles that he needs to flatten for easier lighting. Hence, he breaks them into pieces using an axe. He got the broken flattened pieces to make the fire. Now, he is breaking more of the pieces to be added to the lighting stove to ignite the fire. The tiniest of the pieces are what he carefully adds to the middle to brighten the fire that expands to the larger wood pieces on the side. Now going back, so what was the big problem? It's the use of the plastic bag. First, it's very harmful to his health as he breathes in the toxins being released off during the burning. Secondly, these toxins stay in the air hovering over where they are burnt going back into the food, hence other workers will eat the toxins absorbed back into the food. That's the science of things. Thirdly, with time the burnt fumes go into the atmosphere affecting the ozone layer which exacerbates pollution affecting the nearest neighbors and the world at large like you and me. And the consequences of it all irreversible climate change impacts affecting our biodiversity in every global village. It would take a longer talk to educate the builder and the consequences of lighting such a tiny plastic bag and advise on the relevant environmental friendly fire lighters. Generally, this is the biggest form of fire lighting today in homes, even when lighting charcoal. People usually refer to it as a way of reducing the plastic bag's rubbish, 
without knowing it's burning us more dangerous to our overall health for both burners and non-burners as the whole environment will be polluted with plastic toxin smoke like this filling the environment. It's such pollution that has led to increased diseases among the population such as asthma, cancer especially the highest trend of stomach cancer as the fumes mix back in the food digested. With the recent stomach cancer diagnosis even among wealth kingly and queenly families such as the Princess of Wales H or H Catherine, we all need to be on the lookout for our health as the diseases spares no one from young to old or poor to rich. On that note, do you have ways we could help communities to advocate for friendlier ways to light fire because they will say we have to eat so to light the fire? Any advice is welcome in the combat the various forms of pollution we face in the world today. Thank you. Together, we can improve our environment sustainably with clean fresh air for better health for us all in our global world that we live in. All right now let's explore in depth what is being cooked. It's beans. They are sorted and soaked in water for washing then cooked. Beans are usually bought in the market. Depending on the quantity needed in this case, it's a kilogram weighted off from the market sacks. Let's quickly explore the life cycle of these legumes. They are planted in the soil and take about three months to grow in the fields developing into the ponds which are later cracked upon harvest to eat them fresh or they can be dried which keeps their shelf life longer. Dry beans used in this case. Unlike fresh beans, dried beans take longer time about two or even three hours to boil. That requires a good amount of fire to monitor throughout. Hence, it's advisable to first soak the beans overnight for tomorrow's cooking. Here, we more fire us being ignited with addition of wood to ensure it's good enough for the beans to boil on for a long time. This is morning hours when the beans are put and it was expected by 13 hours, the beans would be ready. However, it all starts with a good fire to ensure the firewood is fully burning. Here with much of the former plastic burnt out, more plastic may be added to ensure as being done here in this case. From this angle zooming in, much of the wood has caught fire and the old burning wood is lighting together with the new wood added. It means now the stove chamber is ready for use. It's very tricky to light in Frika 3 stove if you are wondering all the effort put. One may think the fire us lighted put to the pot quickly and the fire just dies out if not well lighted. So he takes all lighting precautions necessary. Once he is absolutely sure the fire is good to go, that's when he places the saucepan of beans to start cooking. He also ensures the saucepan is well cushioned so it doesn't tip over by adding little stones of support where it's not well balanced. Here they use brick remains, but generally it's stones usually used. Quickly about the African proverb on stones every African kid is taught. Never ever sit on any of the three stones because they you will never grow tall. You will remain short forever e. That really scared many of us not to remain short no offense to short persons, but the lesson is realizing as an adult the stone could burn you so to protect us. The proverb was and is still kept even alive today that we pass on to our generations. My grandmother clearly told me this too. Now, with the recent inventions of charcoal metallic stoves, sometimes we're forced to use similar proverb. All right here, we see clearly this beautiful saucepan of beans now left to boil away. Mm. Meanwhile, more firewood will be split and left aside to quickly add. Now, interestingly, it's very rare for men to cook, but we have African men who move to cook such as this builder. He really loves it that he has been left in some custody to do the cooking until building completion. That's not to say he is not involved in the construction site. He is very involved. He will leave the beans to boil away for the next few hours as he goes back to help with the construction. Probably his building workload may be lower because after all this smoke, a brother better rest. So generally in Uganda, we love a variety of food when served whether at home or in a restaurant. The food plate must have at least the staple banana food or matuk plus sweet potatoes, cassava, rice, kalo etc. and at least two types of sauce. Below this standard that's not food the more the better ha 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 ha. 
But, let's say with the increasing poor dwindling economy creating bad earning this custom is a bit going down. However, at construction sites, the main food is posho and beans served as this carbohydrate bodybuilding foods gives more energy to the builders. This here is posho that's mingled after the bean sauce is ready and fried. Posho comes from maize or corn flour. When maize or corn seed is planted in the ground sprouting out later, covering large fields as long tiny tree stems in form of elephant grass, in about three months the plants will develop cones. These will be harvested and depending on the type can be eaten raw or make oil out of it in some countries like the USA. In Africa, we cook or roast our maize when fresh. Corn is usually roasted on the streets for sale. For food security, we will leave the mature cones to dry in the garden before the dried seeds are removed, dried at home, then packed in sacks to be taken to the grinding machinery to make the flour. It's this flour that when mixed in hot water boiling, it's twisted with a mingling stick, forming a thick starch that's like this called posho, known as ugali in Swahili. It's best served with beans in Uganda and in Kenya best with sukuma, which vegetables. All right, that brings us to the end of this episode and hope you enjoyed it. We have seen how cooking is important during the building that we saw earlier. Anyways, food is an important aspect of our lives. In Africa, our homes are always surrounded by the gardens. Because why not? Mother Frika has given us the best sunshine throughout the year and rains that water our diverse tropical crops that enrich us with a green surrounding that you can clearly see from the hilltops to the valleys as we walk back home through this African Piri urban village. It's been a pleasure. Smiles.